So if we thought last episode of Critical Role was intense, this episode definitely hyped it up to about a 200. The first like hour or so was Caleb describing his mansion that he made, which wow, I mean the level of detail and time that Liam spent in that is amazing and I think it shows through Liam how much Caleb has come to care and know about these people that he has surrounded himself with and I mean Liam said he was working on it for literally a year and it just showed with every single detail he had the nines everywhere everyone's rooms being specifically tailored to them Bo's room having a mirror above her bed and Yasha being like that's useful <laughs> I I loved it. I mean, I'm not always a huge fan of long descriptive things, and I think it was, you know, not what I was expecting to sit in for like an hour and a half of just descriptions, but I do think the level of detail and everything he went into and, you know, discovering everyone's bedroom and finding out the fun stuff about it, I think was really, really cool just to see where they've come, but also like what they've stayed the same. You know, I think like Ford with everything he's got with Ukatoa and Lost with Ukatoa, I think his room was a great mixture of who he is now and the aspects of himself when we first met him, that sea sailing seaman. I think Liam did a good job of like incorporating both of those, so, like with the hammock and how Ford obviously still has ties to the sea and that will always be his home but then also including a statue of the wild mother and how that's kind of his future I think it was a really cute nice thing I also really loved Bo's room like I said the mirror on the bed is just it takes the cake honestly and then I also really really loved Beth's I think that was so sweet how he thought of Luke and how he had like the little trundle bed for Luke if Luke ever gets scared and wants to stay with Yeza and Beth instead of sleeping in his own room. I saw someone comment but it made sense of like you know he kind of just got rid of the issue of Beth having to leave the party like she can just literally be with her family pretty much whenever she wants. I know like as soon as he closes the spell they'll get yeeted out but like for the night or something like they could just if they're with Yeza they could all just go in together so I do wonder if that's gonna absolve the issue of Beth having to leave because I do I will say last episode when she bought her winter clothes I was like okay so she's staying because I thought it would be a nice progression for her to be like you know like that would have been a nice kind of section where she could have been like okay you guys are going to do this I will stay with my family now but when she bought the winter clothes it was like okay she's definitely coming then. I don't know it's weird because it was like even having Luke and Yeza around was good and bad because it was like they had to really disappear for some moments you know like with the gentleman I do like that Veth was just like yeah sure Luke can come down and Yeza was like well we're gonna take a walk or you know like <laughs> yes it has to be the responsible parent when Luke and Veth are just like yeah, yeah, yeah chaos reign <laughs> but but I did not know how much I needed in my life Luke and Pumat interacting. We haven't seen Pumat in so long guys and I missed him. He's like the OG NPC that broke the party. Like I feel like there's been so many since like Zorth and stuff with the voices that Matt does. But Pumat was the OG. The one that as soon as he spoke everyone at the table was like that what? And it was just awesome to see him and I always love seeing what he comes up with. I know we just had a shopping episode last time but I feel like Pumat he doesn't count you know he's like we're here for him he had a billowing cloak that literally just was a billowing cloak like that's it and then he him and Luke were just so cute where he gave Luke the little ring and he was like pop pop like I just I love Luke so much like how Bo was like oh that's a cool ring and then Luke was like like you're not taking it I love his interaction and I also love I think specifically that you think the people that would be not great with kids are the ones that are good with kids and then the ones that you think would be kind of aren't <laughs> like you think Beth and Jester would be good with kids but like they just get into trouble so much because Beth has so much guilt about leaving Luke that she lets him do whatever he wants and then Jester is also like still a kid so like they have like the same like there's no responsibility there but like Bo and Yasha I've always been so surprised I mean Bo did give him a fryer cracker but like she's on their level you know what I mean and Yasha I think always like looking out for him putting him on her shoulder it was reminiscent of when uh Jester picked him up today even like Yasha putting him on her shoulder versus Jester just like picking him up like that I think shows the types but I do really love seeing that because I didn't think Yasha and Bo would be so 
interested like I think they I thought they would kind of just think not Yasha so much but Bo would think he's kind of just like whatever but like she really like likes talking to him and it's really really cute yeah so aside from Puma where we got some new stuff the other thing was going to see the gentleman who we have not seen in a very long time I love Jester so much with how she interacts with her dad she is obviously so doted on by her mother and is the blue jewel of her mother's eye, if you will. So it's funny to see her interact with a parent that's not as open. And I do know like people are like, oh, he can't be as open because that would show like his weakness. If people knew that that was his daughter, they would use her against him and stuff like that. But it is just really funny how she is trying, you know, to be like, are you gonna visit my mom? Like my mom really wants to go, like you can go right now. And he's like, I'll get around to it, which I don't know how to take it. He definitely doesn't seem interested in me and the mom. I don't know if that's just simply because like, it's over like they just had a one done and it was fun you know or if it's I saw someone comment like oh like he doesn't want to see her because he doesn't think he's a good man anymore which would be interesting and I think Jester could also also be that like middle ground of being like dad you're still a good person even though her dad is a crime boss so but still I like when she was trying to like guilt him into it and being like you know like I don't know when we'll see each other again so like you want to give me a hug this is the time and he was like he has a crazy passive perceptive so you know he saw right through it but it's still his daughter doing like the puppy dog lips so he was like okay come here and like gave her a hug and it was just really sweet and I think yeah I think it's always interesting to see him because he's just like her parents are so intense and so different these like very vivid characters you know that in like opposite directions kind of but they have that same quality of he also threatened like very casually the nine he was like if she comes back with one scratch on her I'm gonna kill you all and it was just so funny because the ruby of the sea has done that as well so I thought that was really cute that like you know he doesn't he's not affectionate because he can't be but if you hurt her you're going down and it was just really sweet to see he didn't really tell us anything I think super new but I do know that you know Marisha as Bo was putting together all her pieces and Yasha was helping I'm gonna be honest that I'm not great at putting that stuff together so that's why I kind of enjoy seeing them just put it together I don't remember like when things happen like I remember the big things obviously but I don't remember like a lot a ton about Molly Mop because it was just so long ago and I don't remember a ton about like you know like random NPCs I'm not keeping notes so I'm always super impressed when they can come up with that and I love watching them try and piece it together and I was not expecting it to go the way it did. <laughs> I think we all weren't. I know they've been talking about and everyone in the chat has been talking about bringing back Molly for a while now. I didn't think it was going to happen like this. I am honestly so surprised. I will say that obviously I don't think it is necessarily Molly Mock and that's why I think they're going to get away with Talison can still play Caduceus and then Matt will take over because I don't think he will be Molly Mock. I think he'll have a different name or something like that and I know there's been theories that he'll be like the big bad but I don't know because it technically seems like from what they've pieced together Lucian and Cree and like their little cult were running from Vesta Ragna and whatever she had them take for her like they didn't want to give it to her so it seems like I don't know I know he has like no memories when he like comes to and is like the new life or whatever so it'll be very interesting to see yeah just if like Talison plays him if Matt plays him I'm leaning towards Matt playing him and him having like a different name and different memory and different accent and all that but I do think it's going to be very very interesting to see you know like we have this person but they don't have memory so they really can't help us and then Kree is still just like out there doing something and not helping us either there's a lot of theories I read that she has also lost her memory similar to what happened to Molly and Lucian and she doesn't remember which is why she didn't remember Jester it could also be because it was just like a one-off thing and she didn't know them that well but it does seem I mean if if you've met Jester and the Mighty Nine you know they're, they're they stick out in your head it's not like you forget them so I do think it's interesting that she was like I don't know who you guys are but yeah I think that Vess particularly maybe will be the big bad I think there is obviously going to be a connection with Trent there where she seemed to not like Trent maybe that was a lie maybe she does work with Trent for Trent something like that I don't know if it's getting Molly's story done without Molly being there so like it just took a longer time to get there or if this is literally trying to connect back to what we originally learned because I do feel like this is calling back to like the circus this is calling back to things that happened there and if you do remember in the beginning the first two problems they had one with the frog at the circus and the second one with the gnolls their issues were both related to something happening with the water and that hasn't come up in a long time but I do think that was a connection that I noticed right from the beginning that both the frog and the gnolls seem to have been affected 
by the water and it was making them behave in ways that they didn't normally behave. So that's why I'm like, are we actually starting to maybe get towards the end part of this campaign or is this just dragging out what Molly should have learned a while ago, like we're doing his story now because you know he is a character and it does connect with everything. I don't know though, I don't know because it feels like all the vest stuff is important and I don't think they would have had that still back when Molly was alive if he had lived on, you know? Like it feels like it does need to happen when you're a higher level like around now. They are only like level 13 and they got up to level 24 Vox Machina, so it's probably still gonna be a little bit, but I'm definitely really excited. And they're not, I don't know when they're back now either, because they said they're taking off next week, but then I don't think they specifically are like, oh, we'll be back in a week. Like it just seemed like it's an unspecified amount of time. And it's just like, of course you bring Molly back, Molly back, and then they're like, yep, we're taking a break. And I'm just like, you can't do this. Like everyone at the end when they saw it was modeling and they were like, no, you can't do this. And Matt was like, I absolutely can. And Talison was like, I'm not saying, I, oh, I mean, everyone knew that his body wasn't going to be there. I mean, that was no surprise. Like everyone had money on that. So when they were digging and there was no body, I was just like, this is one of those things though. like it needs to be turned into a TV show because just like the aspect of like digging and digging and not finding the body horrific like all of their faces were just like you could see the realization and kind of they already knew but it was just a confirmation oh what an intense episode so if you've seen that episode please feel free to leave your thoughts about it down in the comments also make sure this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys next time long may he reign indeed